and welcome to Qubits Education. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to write a letter for Functional Skills English. Now, this can apply for level one and level two. So, um, you know, there is no need to worry too much about which level this is aimed at. For level one, you probably need to write maybe less paragraphs, um, but still everything else will still ap apply. So our objectives for today's lesson are to be reminded of the layout of a letter for Functional Skills English, um, level one and two, and try to memorise it, to plan an answer to an exam question, and to look at a sample exam question answer. So the first thing that I would like you to do here is pause the video and have a look at this, this task. I've taken this task from... Uh, the skills workshop so I hope they don't mind me borrowing it but it's just um, a few different things that are supposed to go in a letter and I want to see if you can or I want you to see if you can put these things in order using the correct options here so pause the video and have a go and then I will put this layout uh, this letter into the correct layout okay so if you've paused the video and had a go what I would like to do is just go through how this layout would look. Now, we've got to be very careful because I'm just going through the layout in this case. This is not an ideal letter that I would like you to write for your functional skills exam. Okay, um, I will go through an example of an exam question and I will explain how I would prefer you to write it. Okay, so um, first of all, we need to have your address in this top corner. Okay, your address. Um, that would be the perfect way to start your letter. Your address goes in the top right-hand corner. Don't use your actual address, just make something up, okay? So your address could be 4 Cademan Close. Instead, you could call it 10 Cademan Road, just to make your life easier and you don't have to think of something randomly new. That's how you could do it. You then need their address, the person that you're writing to, okay? Now, it says there, the manager. Now, that's because in this example, you've been asked to write to the manager. If you miss that bit out and don't put the manager, that's okay. It's not the end of the world, all right? Um, but I would suggest you either write the manager or you write the name of the person that you are uh, writing to, okay? So either whoever you've been asked to write to or their name. But it's not the end of the world if you do miss that bit because you are then going to use their name again. Now, underneath their address, you will use the date, okay? Always the date next. All right. And then underneath that, you will have dear sir or madam. In this case, it would be dear sir or madam because you don't know their name. But if you did know their name, you would write that. So you could say dear Mr. Smith. Or it might be, uh, dear Sadie Cubit, you never know. Okay, whoever it is you've got to write to, you might have to put their name in. Okay, in this case, we don't know their name, so we use dear sir or madam. Now, what you can do then underneath that is put a little regarding section. So it'd be like RE, and then in this case, because it was about um, a room booking, there section has been confirmation of room booking for week commencing 1st of April 2012. It just gives the reader a little bit of, you know, um, an idea of what it's about, okay? What it's about in short, okay? It's like the subject section on an email. But if you miss that bit out, again, you won't be marked down for that, so don't worry, okay? The next thing you're going to have is your introduction, okay? Your introduction is who you are and why you are writing. We've then got the main body of the text. Now, your main body, I would suggest this has only had one paragraph. Well, I wouldn't suggest that one paragraph is the best way to write a letter. So I would expect you in your main body to have paragraph one, two and three, as well as a conclusion. And I will go through that in more detail in a moment. But in the main body of your letter, definitely have more than one paragraph. This was a very short letter, so, um, you know, it only really needed one paragraph. But in your questions that you're going to get in your functional skills exams, either at level one or level two, 
you would definitely need more than one paragraph, okay? You'd probably be marked down if you only wrote one paragraph. You wouldn't be able to score many marks anyway. After the conclusion, you'll have like a little bit of a, a rounding off, okay? I always recommend this bit because it just ends the letter nicely. In this case, he's put, I'm looking forward to staying with you. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me at the address above. And then it says, yours faithfully, okay? And yours faithfully is when we don't know their name. Okay, we don't know their name. And if we do know their name, we use yours sincerely. Okay, that's if we do know their name. Do know name. I will explain that again as we go through. And then he's just signed off with his name. Okay, John Smith. <laughs> All right, so, um, and then you would sign off with your name. With name. Okay, now that's just the layout section that I wanted you to familiarize yourself with. Your main sections are your address, their address, the date, dear sir or madam or dear mister, whoever. Again, you can have this section here, the regarding section, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. You then want your introduction, then your main body, which will consist of paragraphs and a conclusion, a little bit of a rounding off statement, the correct closing, the correct faithfully or sincerely, and then your name. That is the main layout of a letter and you need to memorize it because it needs to be correct for you to get full marks in the exam. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to have a look at how to better prepare for an actual functional skills question. So as I've said, more paragraphs are better. So just a quick recap. When writing your letter, you will have your correct layout for the address, your address, their address, the date, and the correct salutation. So whether that's dear sir or madam or dear Mr. Walters whoever you're writing to, obviously. And you can have your RE section, your regarding section, if you want to. You will then put your introduction. Who are you? Why are you writing? There will be another video on how to write a really good introduction coming shortly. So if you want to watch that, please go ahead. Now, we don't use subheadings in letters, as I'm sure you're already aware, as per the previous task. So we are then expected to put those into paragraphs. Now, normally within an, a functional skills uh, question, you will get like three pieces of information or three bullet points telling you what you need to write about. And I would suggest that you take these three bullet points or three pieces of information and I would put those into your paragraphs. I'm going to show you how that works in a moment. Okay. You will then have your conclusion. Okay, and your, con con your conclusion tells the reader what you've already told them. It's a summary, okay? No new information in there. And you'll have the correct closing, okay? Don't forget that little um, finishing off section. You know, I look forward to hearing from you about this matter, regarding this matter, and so on. Don't forget to pop that in there. But then you need your correct closing. Now, a good tip for remembering your closing is we don't use sir or madam, okay, and sincerely together. So no S's together. So if it's sir or madam, we must use faithfully because we don't use sir and sincerely in the same letter, okay? And then you sign off with your name, all right? So let's look at um, an example question. And we can see how that all applies. This question says that planning permission for a large superstore, help needed to overturn decision. Marbleton Council has granted planning permission for Madison's to build a large superstore on the outskirts of our village. This will have an impact on the recreational area that includes the skate park and Marbleton Woods. We need local residents to write to the local council objecting to this proposal and its obvious effects on the natural environment, 
recreational areas and village facilities. Act now. Write to Gloria Stevens, Planning Department, County Hall, Stanton Way, Marbleton, MB2 4AD. Together we can stop this madness. And then underneath it tells you what your task is. Write a formal letter to the council to persuade them to reconsider their decision. So because this is a formal letter, you've got to write quite formally, quite professionally. Okay, um, there is also another video on formal and informal. So if you want to um, go ahead and watch that, then you can. So what I want to do is I want to use this section of the question to plan my answer. I don't want to take too long to plan my answer because I don't want to waste time. And the more you do plan when you're practicing, the easier it will be to write your question in the exam. Okay, to write your, sorry, your letter in the exam. So my plan. So now I'm not going to write in my plan that I'm going to use my their address, my address. I should remember that. You need to remember the layout, okay? In my quick plan, I'm just planning what I'm going to put in my paragraphs, okay? Now, I've put there Dear Gloria, but I'm actually going to put Dear Gloria Stevens because it's formal and I want to be a little bit more um, professional about it. And then I've just put there Intro. I've not written a plan for my introduction. If you want to go and watch that video on, on uh, well, not just yet, but it will be here soon, the video on writing a really good introduction, then that will help you. Who you are, why you are writing, basically. You know, my name is Sadie Cubitt. I'm writing to you because I completely disagree with the planning permission that has been granted uh, for Madisons to build a large superstore on the outskirts of our village. Okay, you can use the question to write your introduction. Then what I was explaining on the previous slide is that you would use the four set the three or four sections given to you in the question to do your uh, to write your letter. So the first section explains that Marbleton Council has granted planning permission for Madisons, which is obviously a company uh, that owns superstores or runs superstores, to build a large superstore on the outskirts of our village. So in paragraph one, I've just come up with a few things that I could write about in there. So I'm going to explain that the council has granted permission. Why? Why have you, plan Why have you granted permission for this? We're not sure. We don't understand. It's been granted to Madisons. This is the kind of company that the Madisons are. This is what they do. It will be on the outskirts of our village and we're just not happy about this. Okay. Now, obviously, they're just bullet points and you've got to then expand on each of those in sentence form and I'm going to show you that in a moment but you've got to remember that this is just a, a fake letter you can add in anything you want you can say that hundreds of children sit on the outskirts of the village <laughs> well every day uh, sunbathing or playing on the hopscotch sections of the paths whatever you want to put in there use your imagination fake it lie it is not real i think people really get et up by the fact that they need to write something that's true and you really don't okay the second section of the question says that this will have an impact on the recreational area that includes the skate park and the woods we need local residents to write to the local council objecting to this proposal and its obvious effects on the natural environment, recreational areas and village facilities. Now, you can actually expand that into two paragraphs if you wanted to, which is more or less what I've done here. OK, because there's quite a lot in there. And so in paragraph two, I've just put put in there some uh, some points. Explain why you can't let this happen. How will it affect how will it affect the area? And expand on those points. Don't just write down that it'll affect the area. How? How will it affect the area? Again, make it up. Talk about who plays on the skate parks and in the woods. You know, do they hold events in the woods or on the skate parks? How will it affect that? Just, again, make it up. Do you have a memory of when you played there as a child? Again, make it up. <laughs> I've then circled this final section, but... 
before I go on to that point, I just want to put down in paragraph three, for example, a bit more to do with the second section. Talk about the natural environment and how it will be impacted. Okay, your big point here is how. Expand on those points. Talk about the use of the village facilities. What will need to be moved in order for this superstore to be built? Again, you can make that up. Make up some facilities that are there and how they'll be affected. Explain what you need them to do. You need to urge them to reconsider their decision to allow this planning to take place. Okay. You want to be quite persuasive in this letter. Okay. Um, again, another video you could probably go and watch is the video on language techniques because it will explain different techniques that not only do you need to look out for in the reading exam, but techniques that you can use in the writing exam in order to make your letters or your writing more persuasive or more emotive, more emotional, okay? Um, finally, you have your conclusion, which is technically your paragraph four, and you will summarise everything that you've just said in a few sentences in your letter. You know, use some motivational phrases that you might have used throughout the letter, all right? Don't include anything new necessarily, all right, don't put in a new point about how it's going to affect the area. All right, but you could put in some motivational phrases, you know, we need to stop this madness because it says it here. So we could put that in the conclusion if you wanted to. Okay, don't forget to keep persuading people. All right, use your, you can use something like rhetorical questions. You know, how would you like it if someone came and put a massive superstore near your beautiful homes you can use emotive language you know make them feel sad or guilty all right and then don't forget as this is a letter you need to sign it off correctly we can use that finish that i told you about okay this bit here i really hope you choose to reconsider your decision for this proposal i hope to hear from you regarding this issue very soon Yours sincerely, Sadie Cubitt. And the reason I've put yours sincerely is because I know her name. Know her name. Okay. Okay. Let's look at a real answer from a student here. Okay, so as I'm reading through this, I want you to see if you can spot what's wrong with this example. And then I will go through what is wrong with it once I've read it through. Okay. So... Gloria Stevens, Planning Department, County Hall, Stanton Way, Marbleton. 1st of April, 2015. Dear Gloria Stevens, I'm writing this letter to you to express my views on the planning permission given to build a superstore on the edge of our small village, Marbleton. Firstly, one of the, main, uh, one of the many effects on our village is the negative impacts on our local natural environment. The new superstore will certainly increase the pollution amounts due to the amount of people visiting, which will have a negative impact on our local wildlife. Secondly, the recreational areas will be affected by traffic, which will affect locals, especially the younger people of the village who enjoy socialising and spending time at our skate park. The rise in level of traffic will see the dangers of travelling to the skate park increase as youths are more likely to be involved in an incident with a car, which is something nobody wants to happen. Also, the traffic will see a rise in noise and pollution levels, therefore having a negative effect on Marbleton Woods. Finally, the village facilities will be negatively impacted as the number of people who will be in the village will prevent locals from visiting facilities which the village already has to offer. Yours sincerely, Luke King. Okay, so if you'd like to pause the video and just have another look through that and see if you can spot any other errors, please do so, and then I'll go through it. Okay, if you've paused the video, I'm going to go through the uh, mistakes. So the first thing he has missed is his address. His address should have gone up here, okay? Unfortunately, he's missed that out. What a shame. Okay. Now, in her address, he's put Gloria Stevens planning department should have a, a capital D, and so should Way, Stanton Way, because they're both places, okay? He's put the correct address, though, and the date, and he's started it in the right way, 
All right, so that's good. We can notice that it's a formal letter. We can tell. He then goes on to uh, give his introduction. I think you could always elongate an introduction a little bit. I'm writing this letter to you to express my views on the planning permission given to build a superstore on the edge of our small village, Marbleton. So Marbleton is with a B, not a P, Marbleton. Spelling mistake. Firstly, one of the many effects on our village is the negative impacts on our local natural environment. So he talks about it impacting his local environment, which is great. But because he said our local, we don't need impacts. We just need negative impact. Okay, I'm just picking out small bits here. It's not even that big of a deal. The new superstore will certainly increase the pollution amounts due to the amount of people visiting, which will have a negative impact on our local wildlife. Okay, that's fine. A little bit um, of a long sentence there and a little bit unclear. Okay, so be clear about what you're trying to say. Don't forget, I also mentioned expanding on the points. He hasn't said how, he's just said that it will. Okay, so how? How will it impact? Okay. Secondly, the recre recreational areas will be affected by traffic, which will affect locals. So here it must be affected, because when we use the word affected, it's, it's basically a noun or it's had an impact, okay? An actual impact on it whereas here affect locals that's fine because affect is more of a um, a verb affect is a verb and it is used as in how it is doing something okay and it's also an emotional effect so effect so you can use that there again I'm just picking out bits where he's he's lost marks um, here and there you might not have even noticed these ones uh, he's made a mistake there because for some reason it's gone down to the next line when it didn't need to. Um, people of the village who enjoy socialising and spending time at our skate park. The rise in level in level of traffic in the in the level of traffic will see the dangers of travelling to the skate park increase as youths are more likely to be involved in an incident with a car, which is something nobody wants to happen. Okay, here, there's a little bit of a problem with, like, the way, not just the here, but throughout this sentence. It's not written, it's, again, not very clear. Um, Subject-verb agreement isn't perfect, so his grammar is a little bit off. Okay, and he's made a mistake here with to happen. No space. Also, the traffic will see a rise in noise and pollution levels, therefore having a negative effect on Marbleton Woods. Again, expand. How? How will it have an effect? Finally, the village facilities will be negatively impacted as the number of people who will be in the village will prevent locals from visiting facilities which the village already has to offer. This is very unclear as to what he means. I think what he means there is that the local businesses won't be used as often because of the, the large superstore. Okay. Uh, so he just needs to explain that better. He's, he's, he's got, you know, it's a bit of a long sentence and there's clarity issues all the way through that. He hasn't used like a finishing off section, so he hasn't said that he hopes to hear from her soon regarding the matter, but he has used the right sign off and he's put his name. Okay, and he has written, you know, three paragraphs there, including an introduction. So it's nice, it's, it's, um, there's a few mistakes throughout. There's probably other ones that you've noticed that I've just not picked out, but I am going to go through um, the mark scheme now and see where he's lost marks. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, here is the mark scheme. So, detail. He was awarded two marks out of three. So, like I said, lack of expansion and clarity in relation to the effects on the village facilities. So, you need to expand on your points, okay, to gain full marks. Concise. He was quite concise. He did express himself well. We know what the letter was about, so he scored full marks there. He also had a nice logical order. He used his paragraphs well. Now, persuasiveness, he scored one mark out of two. 
okay he wasn't very persuasive he didn't use some language techniques persuasive techniques that i mentioned such as rhetorical questions and emotive language okay he kind of just explained the same thing a few times which was a shame so i would like to make sure you to make sure that you are using rhetorical questions maybe some emotive language okay as you're writing your letter you can watch the video that i mentioned on language techniques I'll write that here, okay, which will help you with your reading paper as well as your writing. Now, format um, was four marks because you can show, that it was shown that it was a formal letter, okay. Now, he also scored four marks in terms of structure, which I was surprised about because he missed his entire address off he didn't put his address but he did address it to the correct person okay he did put the date and he used the correct salutation he also used the correct um clothes using yours sincerely so i can see why he gained four marks and he didn't miss anything from not writing his address however i would recommend that you do write your address because you don't want to lose marks just in case you get an examiner who notices that obviously in this case it wasn't noticed language or clarity he scored two marks out of three okay he had three language issues he used the wrong words or phrases sometimes such as effect and affect and he um you know he uh he wasn't clear when explaining some of his points especially on that end sentence it was very unclear okay so just make sure that you're very clear with what you're trying to say. Spelling. Although he used the wrong wording sometimes, he did spell the majority of them correctly. So he only had one error and he lost one mark for that. So he got two marks out of three. Punctuation. Okay, he did have he did have quite a few errors with punctuation, eight errors altogether, but he only lost two marks. Okay. Um, including proper nouns. Okay, so he, he didn't use the correct nouns in there. You know, I did explain a couple of those as we went through. Lack of space between um, words, such as um, which nobody, nobody wants to happen, to happen, he missed. And also people and visiting. Okay, he missed that out. Um, and that's classed as a punctuation error. Okay, but he still got two marks out of four. Grammar. As I mentioned in that sentence, the final sentence, as well as the one previous to it, he missed, you know, the subject verb agreement wasn't quite correct. It wasn't very clear. So he only scored three marks out of four. Okay, but he did score 19 out of 26. And 19, let me just get my pen. 19 out of 26 is actually 73%. So that is a pass. Okay, I would like you to try and aim for the 70% range to pass. Obviously, you do get two questions, so you want to try and get 70% across both to pass the writing exam. Some people have passed on 64% before, but I think if you try and get the 70%, you're not going to um, lose, or you're going to ensure that you pass. Okay, so the more that you revise and the more that you do and try to make sure that you're using the paragraphs in the right way, you're very clear with your points and you try not to mix up the subject verb agreement too much. Okay, I will do a video on subject verb agreement because it is something that people find tricky and they're not sure what it actually means. So I'll definitely do that. Okay, and in order to gain marks on a letter like this you want to make sure i'll just write them down here so you've got them you want to make sure that you are using the correct layout okay if you want to write these down you can the correct layout you want to make sure that you are using the correct salutation which means dear sir madam or dear mr Smith or dear Mrs. Walters, whatever. Okay, you want to use the correct closing. That's yours sincerely or faithfully. Okay. 
you want to be clear about the points that you're making and concise. You want to make sure that you make sense, basically. You want to be clear and concise. You want to expand on your reasons, expand on your points, okay? And make sure you're using good punctuation, good or correct <laughs> spelling, punctuation, and grammar. And if it is, sorry, that was quite a long one. If it is um, a letter where you're having to persuade someone to do something, use some persuasive language or techniques. Okay, again, there is a video on that. But those techniques that you could use are emotive language and rhetorical questions. Okay. Okay, so we have been reminded of the layout of a letter. Okay, for English, for functional skills English for level one and two. I want you to try to memorize that now. Hopefully you'll be able to do that after we've gone through a few examples. We have planned an answer, okay, showing that for each bullet point or each section of the question, you can write a paragraph, which makes it easier for you. And you've looked at a sample exam question answer. And hopefully you gained quite a lot from looking at that and looking at the mark scheme. Okay. Okay, so well done. Thank you so much for using Cubic Education and I really hope to see you next time.